resource capacity demand management is not only a core capability of Microsoft PPM, it is also one of the biggest pain points for organizations and the most requested feature. At Sensei, we recommend a best practices approach to resource management, where long-term planning is done with generic roles in a high-level resource plan. Think of this as your resource budget for the project. You might ask for three developers for five months or a project manager at 50% and so on. Then, when your project is approved, you will build out a detailed schedule with assignments for named individuals. From a reporting perspective, we have different needs depending on the horizon we're looking at. In the very near term, resource managers need to identify resource conflicts across active projects. In the medium term, we want to understand and review all the approved allocations of resources. And in the longer term, we want to identify resource demand and bottlenecks. For resource conflicts across active projects, the look-ahead reports will show the remaining availability based on work assigned to projects over the coming weeks. In the example here, Mike is assigned to multiple projects and over-allocated as a result of all those assignments. Another report will then focus on the approved allocations for Mike and highlight which projects are utilizing Mike without formal approval to do so. This allows us to quickly take action and proactively resolve resource conflicts. For the medium-term reports, we focus on reviewing how our team members have been allocated, in this case, the team of DBAs in our organization. When new resource requests come in, it's helpful to review where the team is already allocated. For longer-term planning, we want to identify future resource demand and bottlenecks based both on the requests we're receiving in new proposals and work already approved and in progress. In these reports, we typically summarize that demand by role or department. This gives us a clear picture of where bottlenecks exist in the organization and where we may need to hire additional staff. Let's take a closer look at the detailed steps in this process. First, the project manager submits the formal requests for generic roles in a resource plan, so the high-level budget. Then, assuming the business case is approved, the resource manager will allocate named individuals in the resource plan. Now, the project manager is able to build out the detailed schedule with assignments for the project team, staying within the approved allocations, of course. In a typical portfolio, organizations will have proposals that have not yet been approved but requesting resources. There will also be approved projects with just a high-level resource plan. And then the active projects with detailed scope and assignments. Our reports pull data from all proposals and projects for a complete picture of the demand on our resources. Then we can filter from there based on the exact questions we're trying to answer. To see this process in action, we'll start at the beginning with the resource requests. Here, I have a newly submitted proposal. The governance workflow shows us sitting at the very first stage. We've submitted the business case, complete with problem statement, expected benefits, and costs. We've done the strategic impact assessment. So now it's time to submit our resource requests. I start by setting the time frame for the project and then add the generic roles. I can even describe the work to make it easier for the resource manager to allocate people. Once I have all the right roles in place, I can start entering my requests. For this project, I anticipate needing a DBA at 75% for the first three months. I also need an infrastructure developer at 50% for the duration of the project. And since I've worked with Irving before, I'll add a comment to request him specifically. 
I need a project manager at 25% for the duration of the project. And then I can fill in the rest of the team as needed. Now, I've submitted my resource budget. Let's put on the resource manager hat and process these requests. For the infrastructure developer, I'll pull up Irving and see if he's available. It looks like he's allocated to another project and some customer support work, but this new project is more important, so I'll adjust the percentages and notify the other project manager. Now I can allocate him at 50% per the original request. For the DBA, I will allocate Doug Brown and then continue to fill the other requests until the project is fully staffed. In your organization, these allocations might be done by several different resource managers if you are allocating people from different departments. Within Microsoft Project, we can see the approved allocations and monitor the peak for each resource. So with the resource plan approved with named individuals, the project manager can now get to work on assigning resources to tasks. Following this process helps to minimize overallocations in the first place and allows everyone to monitor resource utilization continuously. As an organization, you will need to decide whether to account for all of your resources working time in Microsoft PPM or only certain types of work and set their maximum availability accordingly. Once you do, you can follow the process to allocate resources to projects and have project managers manage to those allocations. Your team members will get clear direction on what to work on and be able to track hours on project tasks, non-project work, and non-working time. The master task list will show team members all work in the system, and the integrated timesheet will show work planned for this week alongside your administrative buckets. If you want to learn more about resource management best practices, or any other Microsoft PPM solutions, please contact us to get the conversation started.